Hey guys, it's Alex Pierce. Today I'm gonna to show you some updates I've made to AP Octane. So you can see on the side here, we have the Octane panel and it has AP Octane. You can probably see there's already a few more options here. Uh, if you have 1920 by 1080, for instance, um, you can set this to be 100% or 50% very quickly. And same with max samples. That just changes the max samples from uh, whatever it was to 500, 2500, 5000, 10, etc. So this makes it real, it makes it easy for if you just want to make, you know, do a quick render. Uh, you know, you just push two buttons and then you can, you can render, you know, really quick. And likewise, when you're ready to render something higher, you can just go full and 500 or whatever you want. Okay, next we'll talk about object tools. So cam visibility on, what that does is if you select an item and you go to the item properties, you see camera visibility, shadow visibility, dirt visibility, and you can turn that off and it will turn all those off. Now, I've already sort of talked about this in the Facebook group, but uh, it's been a little buggy for me and I'll show you what I mean. If we go into the rendered view here, if I turn off cam visibility, you can see it goes off here, but it doesn't go off here. Sometimes if I just re-render, it'll, it'll fix it, but it didn't, you see? Let's see, if we manually do it, it worked. but the shadow didn't. This shadow should go away. When you uncheck this, the shadow should go away. So I'm not sure if that's a bug in um, Octane for Blender or, or what the issue is. Let me know in the comments or in the Facebook group uh, if, if you're seeing these same issues here. But either way, the functionality is there, whether it works or not, I can't really do anything about that. Render layer, what render layer does is it sets this object to whatever selected object that you have uh, it changes the render layer to uh, to two or to one. So you can see here one or two. Uh, I think material tools are the same. Setup tools, these are all the same. The only thing that's changed is this path trace quick settings. And you probably already noticed um, when I'm rendering here, it looks different. The way it's rendering, it's very different. And these settings were provided by, if I hover over this, it'll tell us who it was provided by. I cannot pronounce his name. I'm not even going to try it. Someone who knows Octane a thousand times better than I do uh, recommended some settings to do a very quick render. And you can see this is on path trace, but it renders as fast as direct lighting. I've been really impressed with the, the speed at which it renders. And you can see it, it, it does it differently. Like it, you saw that it kind of goes in a, in a clockwise, it renders here and then renders there and then comes around. And the very first few samples it, it like it looks like it's 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 bugging out but that's part of the way it's uh, rendering and if you if you scroll down here you can sort of see what those settings are basically it changed the diffuse depth glossy depth scatter depth we changed the um, GI clamp we changed uh, caustic blur we changed let's see what we got here I think there's a few other places that like coherent ratio this is one I'd never even heard about uh, so Let's see, what is the default? If I push backspace, it should go give us the default. So zero, so now it renders how you're normally used to seeing it. And if you look at this, you can go up higher and you'll see sort of the, the, the results you get. So I think he set it at 0.3. So yeah, it's very, very interesting. This is another one I didn't know anything about. We didn't change it, but parallel samples. If you're having um, memory issues, you can try changing this. This might help you a lot. Yeah, I might put this something with parallel samples in a future update uh, just because I know uh, many people have had memory usage issues and this looks like it might be sort of key to that, at least when you're rendering. So the other, the other update I did was in the shading workspace, if you're in object mode and you push Control T, you get a, uh, a Node Wrangler type action that you're probably familiar with, which adds an image texture and a, and a transform and connects it to the color. So that's, that's one thing I, was, I would constantly do um, with Node Wrangler that I was just really missing. So it right now it works with Universal Material and it works with Diffuse. So if you have a Diffuse material here and you do Control T, it'll automatically hook it up here. Uh, and the other thing is if you don't have those and you push Control T, it'll just bring in the image texture and the full transform. So uh, you can do it multiple times if you want to bring in, uh, you know, a bunch of different ones for for your different textures and your different materials. So anyway, hopefully that will be helpful for you. I know it was helpful for me. <laughs> so that's it for this update. I'm taking a break from making Octane for Blender tutorials. 
not because I don't want to, but because I have two coworkers who are coming over to Blender from Maya and Lightwave, and I'm starting a brand new Blender beginner tutorial series. And same with the add-on. I've, I've been making a bunch of different add-ons, but one of the ones I'm working on right now is sort of to help new users to Blender in general you know, sort of like this AP Octane, you know, just give me the, the, the things I need to know right now to get up and running and then I'll figure everything else later. <laughs> so uh, that I'm sort of trying to do that same thing for, for new Blender users. So I apologize. I know a lot of people are sort of waiting for me to do these Octane for Blender tutorials. And uh, as you know, it, Octane for Blender is a, is a very, very deep rabbit hole and I love it and I can't wait to learn more. I continue to use it. I will continue to uh, add things to this add-on. So if you have ideas, let me know. But for me to do real tutorials, I, I really have to be a subject matter expert. And that's one thing I am not in, <laughs> in Octane right now. I think I could, I could spend a few days on one subject and then do a tutorial, which is what I had planned on doing before. But uh, I'm not going to be able to do that probably in the next month. So uh, hopefully in January I'll be able to to get back on diving into Octane like really really heavily and starting you know to share whatever whatever I learn. Okay, that's it for me. If you haven't subscribed already, you know that's that's probably the best way you could support me is just by subscribing, liking, sharing my videos, that sort of thing. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful and take care.